next round. <clears throat> okay, so um, we have come to the lecture 39 of the um, series. We are winding up the series of lectures now. So, this is the uh, second last lecture on the series. Um, we were talking in the last class about wave effects. Uh, we are we started this uh, the topic of today's lecture we did start in the previous lecture we discussed uh, some preliminaries of waves we were discussing um, how we deal with waves the main effect of uh, waves on ships is this that is the waves have the effect on ships it, why are we studying waves first of all i mean what is the purpose of waves um, as such I mean, we don't study so much currents on the on the on this hydrodynamics as much as waves because waves have the property of uh, producing a force and a moment on the ship. So when uh, when a ship encounters a wave, it is subjected to a force due to the wave and an encounter due to the wave. Mostly, the force due to the pressure distribution around the hull is varying because of the presence of waves, and uh, this and this force and moment produces its own uh, motion on the ship. As you know, any force or any moment will produce motion. Force will produce a translatory motion and moment will produce a rotational motion. Now, this is seen to happen in the ships. So, because of this we study waves. So, in the last class we have seen, we have uh, seen some of the basic definitions of wave, basic assumptions. First of all, we saw that the fluids are all incompressible, inviscid, irrotational fluids, fluids with zero vorticity. Uh, the, the cons there is no rotation for the fluids. Then, um, then we also saw what is known as a kinematic free surface boundary condition. The boundary condition which says that the velocity of velocity with which the curve is changing. So this curve it is actually moving up or down. Um, the velocity with which that curve is changing, the rate of change is equal to the velocity which with the fluid particle is also moving because the fluid particle is moving because of the change in the curve because the wave because of the wave the fluid particle is moving and therefore uh, dou psi by dou t where psi is the uh, surface elevation so dou psi by dou t is equal to dou phi by dou z where phi is the uh, velocity potential and uh, dou phi by dou z represents w the velocity in the uh, vertical direction so they are balanced and uh, this uh, is the primary condition known as a kinematic free surface boundary condition applied now the second boundary condition that is usually applied to uh, the free surface is known as the dynamic. Remember that. Note that. Uh, now itself that uh, there are two types of boundary conditions usually applied on any problem. We call them as the dynamic or the kinematic. So you can have dynamic boundary conditions or you can have kinematic boundary conditions. Okay, these are two types of boundary conditions that are uh, seen to occur that are see, found to uh, happen in uh, in real ships and uh, these are um, the kinematic boundary condition is um, the kinematic boundary condition now the word kinematic always refers to velocity that means we when whenever we say so, something about kinematics it is a description of velocity kinematics the word is the description of velocity it is the study of velocity so kinematic Kinematical boundary condition is a boundary condition on velocity. The other is the dynamic boundary condition. Dynamic boundary condition, that word dynamic stands for force or pressure. Pressure is force per unit area, so it is also equivalent to pressure in this sense. Uh, so, the dynamic boundary condition is a boundary condition on pressure. So, there are two types of boundary conditions we give boundary condition on pressure and we say uh, on the free surface and boundary condition on the uh, velocity. These are these are two parameters we give we have to solve see at the end of the day we have to solve for two main things one is the velocity distribution around the anything any around a ship or any body or a floating structure the second is to study the pressure distribution around the hull so these are two problems that finally we end up solving so the boundary conditions given are the pressure boundary conditions and the uh, velocity boundary conditions so you have the dynamic and the kinematic boundary conditions now the dynamic boundary condition is usually given in terms of what you I am sure you must have heard by now what we call as the uh, Bernoulli's equation. So, there is a very famous and very widely used equation which is known as a Bernoulli's equation. 
again note that the Bernoulli's equation is assumed for an inviscid flow along a streamline where laminar inviscid flow. So, whenever the, the moment the flow turns into turbulence uh, or turbul it becomes a turbulent flow, there is no there is no more Bernoulli's equation. So, the Bernoulli's equation states that uh, dou phi by dou t plus g psi plus half um, Now, this is the simplest form of the, this is the Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's equation states that the, uh, the pressure plus dou phi by dou t plus uh, g psi, we are talking about, now this is applied to the free surface. Now, why is it P atmosphere? Because at the free surface, the, the water is exposed to the atmosphere. So, it is at pressure becomes atmospheric pressure and in many cases and in most cases, we set the atmospheric pressure equal to 0 which is known as a gauge pressure, we set it equal to 0, atmosphere has a gauge pressure of 0. So, this is does not exist, so this becomes 0, therefore our equation becomes just dou phi by dou t. Now, what is this? Dou phi by dou x is u, this is just u square plus w square, half of u square plus w square. So, this is the kinetic energy of the particle. So, what we are saying is that the different forms of energy, so the kinetic energy plus uh, pressure energy plus potential energy plus um, uh, this is also some kind of uh, dynamical energy, this the total energy is a constant. It is, it is actually a kind of energy conservation principle only. Now, pressure is we call it as a pressure energy. So, the sum total becomes constant which is the Bernoulli's equation. So, in this case we as I said before, we, we are we do most of the problems in the small amplitude wave theory. There is the case where you have the amplitudes much smaller than the wavelength in those cases in the small amplitude wave theory we say that the velocities are fairly small these are velocities u and v are fairly small so u square and v square are u square and w square are much smaller so this also can be in general neglected so the equation becomes dou phi by dou t plus g psi equal to 0 becomes the equation this becomes the um, at z equal to 0. This becomes the um, this becomes the Bernoulli's equation on the free surface. Now, um, what we can do is we can combine this equation dynamic boundary condition with the kinematic boundary condition which we just derived. So, what do we have? We have now two equations. So, we will do one thing we will differentiate this with respect to time dou psi by dou t comes dou phi by dou, dou square phi by dou t square comes and uh, so this dou phi by dou t here we will replace it by dou phi by dou z and therefore you come up with the equation which says dou square phi by dou t square plus g dou phi by dou z equal to 0. This is known as uh, the uh, linearized free surface boundary condition. So, this we call it as a linearized free surface condition. Um, okay. So, uh, this is a this is a very important equation, it is it is important and uh, um, just for information sake, we call something as the wave number, we define it as 2 pi by lambda. If lambda is known as the wavelength, it is the wavelength of the wave, then k equal to the wave number is equal to defined as 2 pi by lambda. It is the wave number of the wave. Then um, the solution, now suppose you solve the Laplace equation with the different boundary conditions. So, if you solve the Laplace equation with the kinematic boundary condition, dynamic boundary condition. Um, now, if you can also apply a bottom boundary condition, a bottom boundary condition will hold that the normal velocity across the bottom is 0. You know that when there is a fluid, when there is a solid, 
uh, that is when there is a fluid fo uh, flowing over a solid, the velocity ta uh, normal to the uh, body will be 0 at the body. So, because it cannot penetrate, it is the in impenetrable condition. So, that condition states that, um, so at the boundary, bottom boundary that condition holds, that is 1. Then, so that is known as a bottom boundary condition. Then there is a dynamic boundary condition, free surface boundary condition. There is a kinematic free surface boundary condition. Now, with these three boundary conditions and the Laplace equation, if you solve, you will end up with a solution for phi, which says that phi is equal to g psi by omega psi 0 by omega e power k z cos omega t minus k x. So, this is the equation of phi for a wave which is traveling in the x direction and it has a frequency of omega. So, this is the expression for phi of that wave, the potential of that wave provided these boundary conditions hold. Um, so, what have we done? We have just solved the Laplace equation subject to the boundary conditions dynamic free surface, kinematic free surface, bottom boundary. So, when you solve these equations, you get an equation for phi as this. So, what do you see? First of all, we see we can get many things like when you do for instance dou phi by dou z, you will get the vertical velocity of the uh, particle inside that wave. Dou phi by dou x will give the horizontal part velocity of the particle inside that wave. Now, dou by dou t of dou phi by dou z will give the vertical acceleration, acceleration in the z direction. Dou by dou t of dou phi by dou x will give the horizontal acceleration. Integral of dou phi by dou z dt will give you the, the uh, vertical displacement psi at any point, psi at any instant of uh, x and time. It will give you the dou phi, uh, w, it, it is integral of w dt, which is the displacement in the displacement of the particle inside, it is not this psi, I will just let us call this as displacement in the vertical direction or I will call it v vertical displacement. So, the vertical displacement will be given by dou phi by dou z dt, similarly horizontal displacement will be given by integral of dou phi by dou x dt this gives you the horizontal displacement, vertical displacement. So, different things can be calculated as you can see just from this equation for phi. Psi 0 is the maximum amplitude. So, uh, that means how does psi vary? Psi, so psi varies as psi 0 cos omega t minus k x. Okay. So, this is the elevation, how the elevation varies. So, this is like this. So, this represents a waveform elevation which is uh, varying in the sinusoidal fashion and it is traveling in the x direction. So, psi is equal to psi 0 cos omega t minus k x. This is the equation of the sea surface. Um, and phi is given by this expression. So, this represents the wave as such and um, if you, the same things which I said, if you do, you will get that u is equal to, anyway, this is not that important. So, u becomes this, you will get it by doing um, uh, dou, uh, dou phi by dou x will give you the um, particle velocity. Now, you will also see that uh, the uh, speed of the wave or the uh, what we called as a celerity of the wave in this case when you do here, you will see that it becomes a function of the, um, the wavelength of the wave. So, the wave celerity or the velocity with which the crust is traveling will be seen to be a function of the wave. So, these waves are will be a, seem to be a function of the wavelength of the wave and uh, these kind of waves are called as dispersive waves. And, um, on the other hand, there are some types of waves like the sound waves which are acoustic waves which are not really dispersive and uh, these waves which are the surface waves are all dispersive. These gravity waves or free surface waves, they are all dispersive waves. Okay. Then <coughs> this is the some basic introduction to waves. Then um, now we have in the ocean a what we call as a real sea. When we come to the real seas, we have uh, a combination of waves, we do not have a wave with what we had 
that phi was for one wave with one frequency, one uh, wavelength. So, um, what you end up with in the C at any point in space is actually a collection of uh, uh, different waves. It is a it is a sum total of different waves of different frequencies and wavelengths, and therefore we can write them the net the net psi will be actually a sum total of different waves. means they these waves now we come to another term which is known as a phase of the wave. So, if the waves can be in the same phase they can be in different phases with respect to each other. So, it is usually when you talk about different waves that the concept of phase be becomes important that is the phase difference between the waves it uh, affects the waves in which the two waves interact. So, this total psi the total uh, displacement becomes a sum total of the displacement due to the different individual waves which have a um, different uh, uh, which have different uh, frequencies and different um, um, different wavelengths. So, uh, in general in the case of a uh, ocean we can think we can talk about different types of uh, distributions for uh, usually we say that uh, we say the distance between the crest of a wave we call as the distance between the crest of a wave and the trough of a wave as the height of a wave. So, there are different uh, formulations for the height of a wave. Uh, we can represent the height of a wave as a probability spectrum like this. Um, so, if you represent the it is as a Rayleigh function it will go like this. This is how a Rayleigh, fun Rayleigh probability distribution looks like. So, Rayleigh distribution looks like this. You can say that the heights of waves in, in general we are talking about an, an a C in open C in general the heights of the waves are usually represented by this h by 4 m 0 into e power minus h square by um, 8 m 0. So, this represents the distribution of waves as a function. Um, now, this is the probability distribution. So, this distribution is known as a Rayleigh distribution. It is a mathematical distribution. So, so h is the wave height. So, the um, mean wave height if you want to find in case of if you have a distribution like this and if you want to find the mean wave height, we say that it is given by mean wave height is equal to. So, this is the real way is from 0 to infinity. So, 0 to infinity, uh, 0 to infinity uh, h f of h d h. Uh, it will be like this. Now, you know that um, this is the integration of the probability density function uh, between 0 and infinity and what is it? It is equal to 1 because the probability is uh, it has some value h between 0 to infinity is 1. So, between 0 to infinity. So, it is integrated over this whole thing the area under the curve is equal to 1 and um, between 0 and infinity. So, this is so you remove this. So, this becomes the mean wave height is given by h f of h where f of h is the probability density function into d h. Integral of this between 0 to infinity will give you the mean wave height which we can call as h mean. This is the mean wave height of the um, of a uh, general ocean. So, the mean wave height is given by this function and this by some method it will come down to this. If you just do this for that particular Rayleigh distribution this will come down to root 2 pi m 0. Now, there is also something defined as a significant wave height. Significant wave height is defined as is usually written as h 1 by 3. It is written as the um, the mean of the highest third of wave heights. So, as this definition itself says you take the top 3 wave heights, you take a mean of that, you call that as a significant wave height. So, that that is a very important term used in um, 
used in this uh, wave hydrodynamics you will use the you will see the term significant wave height used very frequently so that is uh, an, uh, one important term then now suppose you have um, a, you, suppose you have a wave which has n components means you have a, a total of n waves of n frequencies uh, n waves of different frequencies and uh, corresponding wave heights and different uh, wavelengths every different now the energy of these the total energy is given by total energy of these wave heights waves the n waves these n waves the net is given by i to n a i square i mean what you need to know is that the energy of a wave is proportional to the amplitude square amplitude is the um, it's like the wave height is half the wave height that is the meaning that is the definition of amplitude so the distance between the mean to the crest or from mean to the trough is called as an amplitude so half ai squared will give you the energy of that wave per unit area um, and uh, therefore you sum them up for all the n components you will get the total energy of the wave now we also define something known as a wave spectrum it is uh, wave spectrum is usually defined like this as a function of omega so you are now having a number of waves uh, let's say n number of waves this is the so the energy spec energy spectrum is given by wave spectrum s which is a function of omega s of omega will be s of omega into um, delta omega is equal to half aj square therefore a wave spectrum is in fact a kind of the this is is it a it is really a spectrum of the uh, wave energies so what we are actually plotting is the wave energies and this this s of omega is known as a wave spectrum this is known as a wave spectrum and uh, um, there are different so you usually you will see wave spectrums plotted in this way so there are different types of wave spectrums plotted in this way omega uh, it will be plotted as omega versus uh, s of omega so this is the wave spectrum will be a function of omega you will have a spectrum like this okay you will have a spectrum like this so this is uh, uh, this is a wave spectrum possibility there are different types of wave spectrum for the real seas for the um, for the seas that are found in um, in real practice we, there are different types of wave spectrums that is energy density functions um, now one of uh, some of the famous ones or one of the most commonly used one is known as a pearson moskowitz spectrum and there is also one known as the john swap spectrum uh, we'll see here one example of this is a pearson moskowitz pearson moskowitz spectrum so this is an example of a one of the spectrums pearson moskowitz um, it's v moskowitz uh, so v uh, pearson moskowitz spectrum this is one of the wave spectrums that are uh, seen in practice in the ocean it is usually given by the wave spectrum is a omega power minus 5 e power minus b omega power minus 4 so this is the um, so this is the expression for the pearson moskowitz spectrum where a is a constant b is a constant omega is a frequency of the wave uh, and so as a function of this wave frequency you will have s the wave spectrum and uh, therefore you have the total s versus omega you will have a curve like this this will give you this pearson moskowitz this occurs at around 0.6 and uh, um maximum comes to around in ordinary seas it comes to around 0.2 meters uh, 0.2 meter square seconds the unit of s is meter square seconds and um, um, so this is one example of a, a commonly found sea st uh, sea state in the ocean now uh, this is some exposure to um, so here we have given uh, some exposure to um the waves very basic concept of waves uh, the different types of wave spectrums found uh, what is a wave spectrum then um 
then about the different uh, principles of that is what is potential Laplace equation. We have seen some basics of waves. This should help you in uh, doing some stability analysis since the course is on hydrostatics we are, and stability concepts. Uh, this wave concept, this wave concepts will be helpful for you in analyzing the stability of ships on waves. So you apply the ships, the ship is now seem to float on the ocean and we apply these concepts there. Now, uh, so actually before winding up we are just mentioning some of the allied topics means the topics that are close to stability. Uh, or those are the factors that affect stability and um, so in addition to the factors that affect stability, we will also mention some of the effects of stability uh, like how does the stability calculation then translate into some other computations in the ship. That is another thing we, we will take a look at since we have only one more class left, we will uh, we'll be looking a little bit into that next class. Right now we have seen what is the. Uh, what is the waves? Now, these are waves are some phenomena that definitely affects the stability. Um, it is not affecting hydrostatics as such, it is more to do with hydrodynamics that is the uh, study of uh, the movement of ships in response to um, or the how the hydrostatic parameters of the ship like the GM or even the uh, different uh, KM, uh, how, how all those things vary as a response of the ship to waves, as a response to waves, how these parameters vary, these are all important things. Um, now let us go into some something else, means now we have seen what are waves, we have basically seen some something about waves, then let us see what is the effect of wave on ship. Uh, uh, before we go into stability itself, there is something else that is how does a wave directly affect a ship? Now we have seen waves produce motion on the ship. We have already said that wave produce forces, wave produce moments. As a result of forces, uh, translation occurs. As a result of moments, rotation occurs. So two types of activities occur here as a result of the waves on effect of waves on um, ships and the effect, the different wave forces, you know, the force types of um, effect of, uh, I mean, the different types of forces exerted by waves on ships. We come to different types of forces, fruit, kyle of, that is outside the scope of this course, we will not go into that. We will just, we are, we are just uh, winding up here with um, some, some of the properties of wave induced uh, movements on the ships. Now as a result of these wave motion, it does not have to be as a result of wave motion of course, these, so some movements are there in the ship. Uh, we say that a ship has 6 degrees of freedom. Now, by degree of freedom, uh, the name it's the as the name itself suggests, it, it has the freedom to move in that direction. So there are six degrees of freedom. We it can move like this, it can move like this. These are all translational motions. We can move like this. So you have three three translational degrees of freedom. Then it can uh, rotate like this. It can rotate like this. It can rotate like this. So it can rotate about the x-axis. It can rotate about the y-axis. It can rotate about the uh, z-axis. Right. So, there have become uh, 3 rotational degrees of motion. So, 3 translational plus 3 rotational, there are 6 degrees of freedom for a ship. Uh, these motions have, these are hydrodynamic terms and uh, these motions have their own names, surge, sway, heave. So, we call that as the translational motions as So you have the translational degree of free, degrees of freedom. Translational degrees of freedom are surge, sway, and heave. So these are all three are translational. These uh, these uh, things these are the movement in the x uh, in the uh, translational direction, and then you can have rotational degrees of freedom. Now these rotational degrees of freedom are defined as roll, pitch and yaw. Now we have already defined a lot about roll um, in a static condition when the uh, ship is static we say that the ship is either heeled or listed. 
when that is happening as a function of time we say that it's rolling so rolling is a dynamic counterpart of healing so you either have uh, healing which is uh, static or you can have the dynamic counterpart of it which is rolling so these are um, this is the meaning of rolling that is one degree of rotational degree of freedom then you can you we have already talked about what is called trimming which is another degree of freedom so that is one again it's a static phenomenon it's heat trimming means it just trims and stays at that direction stays at that uh, draft so that is called trimming and when it is occurring as a function of time you call it as pitching okay that that movement like this it's known as pitching so that is another degree of freedom then as you can imagine there can be a third degree of freedom about the z axis we call that as yawing yaw that movement is called yaw therefore the net displacement of a ship can always be written as s is equal to eta 1 i plus eta 2 j plus eta 3 k so surge sway he um, heave so surge sway heave eta 1 eta 2 eta 3 plus omega cross r where omega is represents different types of heel motions now uh, r the this is a vector product r is the um, you can consider it as the um, the vector the uh, displacement vector and here um means this is about some axis omega is about some axis we will see for instance uh, it this axis is different it's it cannot in all the cases it cannot be defined precisely for instance uh, for instance in the case of pitching if you are dealing with pitching this motion that is the dynamic trimming you know that pitching always occurs about the center of flotation therefore pitching the axis we are talking about is um the center of flotation so for pitching the axis is the center of flotation so that is pitching so that is very well defined and um, uh r represents the distance from that axis to any point where we are trying to find the displacement suppose we are trying to find the displacement the trim displacement uh or pitch displacement not trim displacement if you are trying to find the pitch displacement at a distance uh, let's say 10 meter from the center of flotation that r is that 10 meter and omega which is the pitch frequency into r will give you the uh, displacement of that pitch it, or it gives the pitch displacement at that point of 10 meters from the center of flotation so this is um so this gives you the different uh, displacement value displacement vec this gives the total displacement vector s the displacement as a function of eta 1 eta 2 eta 3 and omega cross r and omega the total frequency there are three types of frequencies we have seen three rotational degrees of freedom eta 4i eta 5j eta 6k roll frequency pitch frequency yaw frequency remember these etas are all frequencies eta 4 eta 5 eta 6 represent frequencies eta 1 eta 2 eta 3 represent displacements and uh, therefore um this is the pitch frequency and this is the yaw frequency so this represents the different dis uh, uh, different um uh, display this rep this s as we have seen before represents the total displacement of the fluid particle now um uh, what do we say is the general um equation of motion of the body now um first of all there are two ways in which you can study these motions the first we call it as uncoupled motions and the second is coupled motions in uncoupled motions we have some motions in let's say let's suppose that we have a pitch motion we assume that the motion in the in uncoupled we say that the motion in the pitch direction does not later affect the motion in the uh let's say the roll direction that means the roll is not affected by pitch pitch is not affected by roll yaw is not affected by pitch surge is not affected by yaw totally uncoupled one is not affected by the other 
the 6 degrees of freedom, 6 degrees of displacement or the displacement in the 6 degrees of freedom are all in independent, inter in, uh, not dependent upon each other, it is completely independent or mutually exclusive. So, those are uncoupled equations, we develop the uncoupled equations and you, later when it becomes more complicated, you will see that they depend upon each other actually and they are called as coupled uh, equations. So, the uncoupled equation, you know that the general equation of motion can be written as uh, if we consider for instance a uh, roll equation, remember roll is always associated with eta 4, it is the equation for eta 4, therefore the equation is this, Now, um, we won't expand, this is known, this is the complete roll equation for a ship that is exposed to this forcing function, okay. The right side represents the forcing function, the external force acting. This equation is something like force equals m a, f equals m a. Uh, we are finding out the total force, the total, um, we are finding out the total external force acting. So, if this is the net external force acting, this is acting, it is it is balanced by the net motion of the, it is like f equals m a, suppose an external force f acts on a body, the body su is subjected to an acceleration a such that m a equals f, that is how we say that the, uh, that is we, how we put the force balance. Just like that, if this external force acts, this force acts, we will not discuss too much about this, when this external force acts, this produces a motion like this. This first term is an acceleration term as you can see here, it is d square by dt square, it is of course, it is a angular acceleration, if this is angular motion, we are discussing this whole equation is for an angular and this is actually a damping term. Now, uh, there are many derivations and very, many very good derivations of this uh, equation as such, the whole equation uh, for, um, but we are not going to do it for the lack of time and this is actually a third term, um, which actually represents the stiffness of the, uh, this actually represents the stiffness of the, stiffness of the ship. So, these are three terms that come in the left side, which balances the net force on the right side, okay. So, this is the equation for um, here, this n, this is the damping term as such, this n is therefore, the damping coefficient. Now, this N4 is the natural frequency of oscillation of the ship in roll. So, ship's natural roll frequency. So, this represents the ship's natural roll frequency. N4, the omega N4 represents the ship's um, natural frequency in roll. And again, it is something, uh, it is a, a response, it is the net force acting. And uh, this, we have defined all the terms. So, this is acceleration. Remember, eta 4 is the roll frequency, I mean roll, not roll frequency, it is eta 4 is the roll, uh, yes, roll frequency, sorry, yes, eta 4 represents the roll frequency. So, d square, um, Um, okay, then uh, you can also have um, a pitch, you can also have this equation in the pitch direction, that is you can have, uh, write the equation of motion in the pitch direction. Remember the pitch frequency is always defined as eta phi,
So, uh, in this case of pitch, we have not used any damping. So, there is no damping in this equation and um, um, therefore, uh, this, this is the stiffness term again and therefore, this becomes your, uh, you can have a similar equation for the pitch. This is the equation for pitch. Uh, this g m l and g are coming in because of that uh, omega. Remember, we have already defined omega for uh, ships, the natural frequency of roll and uh, like the natural frequency of roll, you have the natural frequency of pitch. They are all, they are dependent upon g m l and i, i is the radius of gyration and uh, uh, that um, from that you have, if you remember the expression for that omega and time period, I think we did it in the previous class and we did the derivation in some 10 or 12 classes before. So, when you did that, we saw how that uh, time period of roll and time period of pitch comes means you have, we derived the expression for time period of roll. If you apply it to pitch, it becomes the time period of pitch. So, like that, uh, this becomes, this is, a, this is an undamped, uh, this is an undamped equation. There can be damped pitch, we, this is just an undamped pitch equation given. Um, so, this is the equation in the pitch direction. Uh, so, in general, you will see that or let us consider heave motion. So, um, So, as we have said before, the um, the heave, mo heave motion, the heave displacement is always represented as eta 3. So, m plus a, this I will tell you what. So, this is a wave acting psi 0 cos uh, forcing wave forcing function acting is this and a w uh, is the water plane area and eta 3 is the uh, heave displacement at any instant of time. Eta 3 dot is d, dou eta 3 by dou t which is the rate of change of displacement. This is acceleration in that uh, heave direction in the vertical direction what is the acceleration is eta 3. Now, this m is the mass matrix. And uh, this A is something known as an added mass matrix. So, this in term says that then it will be seen when you are doing the heaving and some other th things as well that the net mass of the ship is seen to be not just the mass of the ship, but some amount of water that is carried by the ship as well. So, uh, that is what we call as an added mass, um, um, uh, added mass. Uh, term and uh, therefore, m plus a becomes the total mass of the ship, the mass total mass in this equation that is the mass of the ship plus the added mass. So, that into et, uh, eta 3 is the heave. So, this will give, so always there is a acceleration term, there is a damping term, there is a stiffness term and there is a is equal to the final forcing, forcing function. So, this is the, um, this is the equation. So, um, this gives you the equation for like so likewise we have got the equations for roll pitch heave you can have it for the other types of motion as well um, now so in general you will see that equation can be written as the real part of this. So, if this is the forcing on the right side, it is given the real part of that is equal to this whole term. Uh, this is the equation of motion, net equation of motion of any kind of body subjected to uh, different kinds of um, um, roll pitch. So, what we see is that um, now this eta in this equation eta is the it has different components. Okay. You will have different types of eta, different ways, uh, the vectors of motions, except motion. Um, so, this is the exciting force or it can also be the moment. So, f is f e power minus i omega t is the exciting force and moment and this is the real part of that force. It is balanced by the net mov movement of the ship, movement of the ship affected by 
acceleration it is in turn reduced by damping and stiffness so this total total force so this represents the um, this represents the equation of motion of a ship now so we have defined right now some um, basics of waves we have defined on uh, we have also defined um, different types of motion that we have seen on ships you can have this kind of uh, the uh, uh, of course the simplest is role equation is the matai equation which we derived uh, remember there there was no damping or anything it was just a very simple equation the real equation will involve damping and stiffness so it's a um, it's 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 the complete equation okay that is one aspect of um, uh, one aspect of hydrodynamics which is i mean these are some basic things in uh, uh, probably this will come more in sea keeping and maneuvering that is this or uh, what we call as motion ship motions ship uh, analysis of ship motions it, when you do the analysis of ship motions you will end up with these um, different degrees of freedom and this uh, this equation of motion and finally the um, you know the equation which involves the mass added mass etc all that comes in um, so uh, what we will do is finally this equation for eta will be written as a ma matrix so it will be there will be a mass matrix there will be a added mass matrix then there will be a uh, damping coefficients matrix like that there will be different terms and uh, it becomes a matrix and you solve the matrix equation to get the uh, motion of the ship okay so this is this is some basics of uh, uh, ship motions now uh, another thing that is also important here is uh, something we define as uh, means uh, another important effect of waves on ships is um, we have already mentioned how the waves affect the stability now waves will also in bring in some kind of a um, the effect of that is waves will also bring some kind of forces on it now the even if waves are not there first of all let us see in the in the absence of waves also a ship is subjected to different kinds of forces um, over the entire length of the ship the ship is subjected to different kinds of uh, ship is subjected to a continuous force or um, force and moment throughout uh, there will be a force and moment acting in different parts of the ship uh, we call the main main one which we call as the shear force acting throughout the uh, acting along the length of the ship and the bending moment that is a moment tending to bend the ship these are all longitudinal forces and i mean these shear force and bending moment are to be analyzed in a longitudinal direction so we um, we are talking about longitudinal bending and uh, shear force now these shear forces uh, how do we calculate the shear force for instance um, now first of all i told you that um, in the case of a ship when it is built so it will be initially uh, there will be a weight distribution on the ship uh, that is uh, first of all the uh, the ship will be subjected to the ship will be lot of weights will be distributed on the ship first of all there will be the hull weight the the weight of the hull itself which is just the uh, just the weight of that uh, structure it will include the weight of the uh, what we call the keel the side walls the side hull um, the deck the platings the bulkheads stiffness um, or the different types of panels everything it will um, it will be the weight of the hull so that is known as a hull weight of the ship now what then you add the propulsion machinery to the ship so the when you add the propulsion machinery to the ship remember you are adding it at different places so when you add the propulsion machinery to the ship you will um, i mean machinery is somewhere near the aft only it's the machinery is kept somewhere near the aft of the ship and from there onwards uh, even going further out and jutting out from the uh, aft of the ship you have the propeller so you have a distribution of weight there continuous distribution of weight so this distribution of weight will add to the hull weight to produce what we call as the light weight of the ship that is the weight of the ship um, after the propulsion machinery is put then we uh, uh, this of course the propulsion machinery and pipings are put on the ship so the, we include all the different pipings on the ship and so in addition to the hull what we call as a bare structure of the ship pipings are put machinery is put um, then um, 
everything is everything else like even the HVAC system or the um, the fuel system everything is in place. So, the weight of all this together we call it as a light weight of the ship that produces some weight distribution on the ship. On top of this you have the dead weight of the dead weight on the ship the dead weight again we have defined it is the net the rest of the weight everything else this will include the weight of the crew it will include the weight of passengers it will include the weight of fuel weight of food weight of grains weight of cargo containers uh, ballast water um, lubricating oil anything else e everything else that we can think of all types of consumables um, so all this will end up together to produce the dead weight of the ship now and of course the belongings everything else uh, together comes uh, together adds up to become the dead weight of the ship so this dead weight is also distributed it is very important when you are designing the ship that you have to design the distribution of all the weights of course we can there are some weights that will move in the ship for instance at least the passengers or but um, or even the fuel and uh, not fuel the um, the fresh water which tank it is but you have to make all the first you have to make a calculation using the different distribution of weights so you have you should have all the weights you put the hull weight light weight the dead weight every kind of weight you distribute all over the length of the ship and then you calculate what is known as a weight diagram so weight diagram will tell you like this so a weight diagram will tell you like you put the different weights you have weights all over this is the length of the ship so this is the aft perpendicular and this is the forward perpendicular so you have different weights distributed all over the ship so now i am going to join them this is the net weight okay the sum total of the light weight hull weight dead weight everything so you join them i am not saying it should be like this but whatever it is you have some weight distribution this is the net weight distribution on the ship now this will give, this is known as a weight curve now uh, another thing we will have in addition to the weight curve is known as a buoyancy curve now um, what do we mean by a buoyancy curve that is we know that the ship has an underwater po portion in it which gives rise to the buoyancy on the ship that is rho into v where v is the underwater volume and uh, you know that once you have the bongians you know how okay before that so at each region in this region this region if you consider this to be the total length of the ship this this region there will be a fixed amount of buoyancy force associated this region this is the buoyancy force buoyancy force buoyancy force so amount of buoyancy force effect acting in these different regions so, mm, so therefore we have we can make a curve of what we call as a buoyancy force why did i put it on the negative direction the, if this is zero if this is positive i have defined this as negative because the buoyancy force acts opposite to the weight curve i mean weight acts downwards buoyancy acts upwards so one of them is positive the other is negative so you have the buoyancy curve it's actually the dis, it is actually the um, curve which gives the um, distribution of volume on the it gives the distribution of volume on the um, along the length of the ship from the aft perpendicular to the forward perpendicular what is the distribution of volume so this so what you this is known as a buoyancy curve now um, now the difference between these two curves the this at each point so this minus this this minus this this minus this this at each point you do weight minus buoyancy curve ends up with some another curve some curve here which we call as a load curve this actually represents the net load act this curve is actually representing the net load acting per unit length on the entire length of the ship so it keeps varying it is acting per unit length the force acting per unit length the load vertical force acting per unit length which is the resultant of the weight and the buoyancy acting per unit length in the over the length of the ship starting from the aft perpendicular to the forward perpendicular is called as a load curve now um, an in 
a integral of this load curve, the area under the load curve, actually this needs a little bit more explanation. We will, um, since the time is up today, we will stop here, we will uh, we'll do it in the next class. We will actually, we will be uh, wrapping up in the next class completely. It's the next class is the, uh, the final lecture on this series. So, we will just end up with some uh, explanation of what is the shear force and the bending moment and, and we will stop. So, right now we have seen what is a load curve and from this we will see how to derive the shear force curve. Okay, for the time being I will stop here. Thank you.